We are live. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the third lecture of uh, Sri Rajni Thurakya Memorial Lecture. Um, and I'd like a few housekeeping rules. If you all can keep your uh, mic on mute, and also if you can put off the video, it will increase the quality of uh, um, the reception of what you're listening to. Uh, I'd like to hand this over to Anita, who is the uh, moderator for today's session. Thank you. Thanks, Lakshmi. Hello, everyone. Greetings and namaste. Welcome to the third lecture of the Sri Rajni Turakya Optometry Lecture Series in association with OCI and supported by Hoya. So um, today's uh, topic uh, is uh, dispensing high-end progressive edition lenses. So to present this topic, we have a renowned optometrist, Mr. Ajay Shinde, who is a graduate from Elite School of Optometry. He graduated in the year 1991. And he went on to complete his master's in uh, optometry from Lotus College of Optometry. And uh, he's a key opinion leader for uh, various ophthalmic lens uh, companies as well as uh, contact lens uh, companies. And uh, he has uh, very many years of uh, experience and practice uh, in the ophthalmic dispensing field. And he also specializes in vision therapy and specialty contact lens uh, practice. And he, he's uh, uh, the owner of uh, Shinde Eye Care and his uh, practice recently completed uh, 28th uh, year. And uh, we also have uh, with us optometrist Apurva, who is um, the panelist for today's session. Um, Apurva is a practicing optometrist at uh, Turakia Opticians Goa since uh, 2009. He did his internship from LVPI Hyderabad, followed uh, by his graduation and bachelor's from uh, Bharti Vidya Peet School of Optometry from Pune in 2008. He's joined his family business and he's also done his MBA in hybrid mode in international business from Wellinkers in uh, 2020. Apart from dispensing eyewear on daily basis, his key area of interest lie in contact lenses, specialty lenses and dry eye management. Welcome, Apurva. Along with him, we have Reshma from Hoya. So over to you, Ajay. Uh, thank you, Anita. I will start sharing the screen. One second. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I wish to thank OCI and Hoya for giving me the opportunity to speak on this platform today. I have this very interesting topic, dispensing high-end progressive lenses. In other words, I would say uh, upselling progressive lenses with better knowledge with regards to the measurements and the design of progressives. So, the purpose of taking markings for single vision is to make sure that there is no prismatic effect experienced in the primary gaze. Then minimum differential prismatic effect in the primary gazes. That's for single vision lenses. Now, what happened, what often it is done is one sec. We take measurements basically with marking on the demonstration lenses, as you're seeing here. And then later, there are some of the practitioners who actually use the scale and measure it. First we take the one eye and then the other eye and take out the, the frame, measure it again, cross check it with the actual regular PD measurements. Some also prefer to make things a little bit more simple by using a pupil meter. Whereas for bifocals, we use just a scale or again with the wax pencil mark that we use for marking the segment height and measure it once again with the scale to get a perfect fitting height for the right and the left lens. 
Now coming on to the progressive lens markings, often we see that most of us, or rather people who have been practicing in the past were doing the same as they were doing it for uh, single vision markings. They would mark the same pupil centers as you see it in this. And then we would just use um, a scale that is the PD ruler, take measurements in first the right and then again the left and match it if it matches with your total pupillary distances. Now, what is important in progressive axis is the fitting height. That is this height from the pupillary reflex to the bottom of the frame or the eye wire. The purpose of taking all these measurements on the demonstration lenses and also providing sufficient details to the laboratory to process is to make sure that the pupil center precisely positions itself uh, or the, the progressive lenses and the fitting cross coincide so well that the eye does not actually encounter any kind of distortions when it views from the distance to the near area. It was the same it, it'll be the same whether it be a hard design or an early soft design or the modern soft designs. Now this is same way it measurements were taken in the past. Only till recently when customization of progressive started, that's when there was a lot of changes that beginning to come. All right. Yeah, I would like to request Paula to put up the poll question, please. What is the most common reason for many opticians not to dispense advanced progressive lenses? One, it is very expensive to, to the customer. Marking is very complex. And the third one was fear of non-adaptation. I would like you to answer this question. This will give me an idea about what most of the opticians and the optometrists think about advanced progressive lenses. Uh, Ajay said approximately 60% uh, have answered, so I'm ending the poll. Mm -hmm. And here sharing the results. Very expensive to the customer, as I thought. Markings, very complex, is about 18%. Fear of non-adaptation is also much more than that of markings being very complex. So marking is not something that many people fear. It's more to do with the adaptation. And when a person returns it back, that's something that is not very comfortable to many people. I, I'll take that point. Okay, let me go through this and I guess uh, your doubts will be cleared to some extent, at least for the people who have, uh, are thinking that markings are really very complex. Okay, how do progressive lenses uh, work? Progressive lenses are basically designed to help the press biopsy distance, the intermediate and the near very clearly. The front surface that is, this front surface, they begin with a specific curvature, that of a best form lens design meant for distance vision. But as the curvature is to be changed, that is at around that portion, the lower half, it begins to steepen up a little bit depending on the power, the add power that is required. And this steepening or the change in the curvature induces some amount of distortions, which in today's world, we're trying to customize that or minimize the distortions that the person actually perceives. That is done by usually pushing these distortions off to the lower periphery of the lenses. So as I could show you here, that is the progression starts from this prism reference point, which is the dot pair, and gradually progresses downwards. Now, <clears throat> in the advanced 
customized progressive lens designs, what is done is the front surface is digitally processed. That's in the finished form with a fixed corridor length. It could be anything. It could be like the 15, the 18, the 20, and the odd numbers. But this front surface design is actually a preset in the software when you have picked up the blank and you need to process a desired power by, by digitally processing on the rear surface or the back surface of the lens. One of the customized designs from Hoya is the Hoya Likes ID. The front surface has this vertical progression, okay, which is, as I said, preset design. And now when you have to digitally process on the rear side or the back surface of the lens, it works on the horizontal progression pattern so as to minimize the distortions or the cylindrical effect that's coming up because of the, uh, uh, what do you call the progression that we've had on the front, front surface. So the customized free from lens has its front surface finished under the digital processing. This front surface design is preset in the software based on the corridor length and the add power that I just mentioned. The back surface processing will be processed or will be based on the front surface parameters. As I said, it's a preset software which would have already got fed into their systems. And when it comes to the processing of the back surface, it's only the software that links to the front surface design and then it begins to process. So in this, when it's doing the back surface, every cell on like in this particular pattern that we're showing, every cell in this grid can have such minute curvature changes to match the front surface. Yeah. That is really basically mimicking that of the best form so as to minimize the distortions the curvature can be as minute as a 0 0.01 diopter difference. So by doing this, you're actually minimizing the distortions to the best possible because you are able to control the, the changes in the curvature of only about 0 0.01 diopters as I, as I remember Mr. Dhaman expressing this. Now, when you have such control over the back surface designing, it results in a decreased cylindrical effect and the prismatic effect. The cylindrical effect is what causes a little bit of uh, the wavy feel, all right? And the prismatic effect, which was undesired, but that would have actually caused the swim effect. So by doing or processing it as a digital processing method, you're actually minimizing the distortions that was being perceived in the corridor borders, and then also reducing the swim effect by reducing the prismatic effect in that particular zones. For processing in advanced progressive lenses, additional measurements are required such as your vertex distance, your pantoscopic tilt and the wrap angle. Besides these, you need, of course, as we have taken measurements, even for your uh, simple basic progressive lens designs, which is for your, which is your monocular PDs and monocular heights. So what makes these parameters actually important is when you actually have a lens, which is slightly tilting, all right, so this induces a small bit of a change in the resultant power. It could be a tilt in the vertical meridian or horizontal meridian, which is going to be on the wrap angle side. And also with regards to vertex distance. Earlier, we had a correction that was possible only in about 0.25 diopter steps. But since you are able to control the, the vertex distance compensation to as fine as a 0 0.01 diopters, why not apply this in while you're processing this lenses? 
So that is why these three parameters of vertex distance, pantoscopic tilt, and the wrap angle become important while you are processing a customized design or a progressive lenses. The, the result of this is that it boosts in the clarity. What I mean to say is, now when we're considering the first order aberrations, it is usually the spherical corrections, the cylindrical corrections, which is when you actually correct them, it improves on your visual acuity. But when you have, or when, you're, when you can manage to control the higher order aberrations, this is going to improve on the image quality. Now, how I would like you to perceive what I'm trying to say here is, it's a very simple thing for a person to be able to picturize saying that, you know, when, when you correct just the visual acuity, you're seeing it something like the LCD TV screens. But when you improve or enhance the image quality by controlling those higher order aberrations to the minutest details, you can enhance the quality of vision to what you see or perceive it like the LED television, the images that you can see slight bit of a difference, but it's not that everybody would perceive it on the very word go. It might take them a little time. And that's when once they actually experience that richness in the color, uh, would they begin to appreciate, yes, this definitely is a little better than the other ones or the regular ones that they have been using. Okay, now getting on to the, uh, the basic tools that are required for assessing or providing certain measurements to the laboratory for them to process the lenses. I would say first and foremost, the most important would be still your PD ruler, which has uh, an option for you to measure the vertex distance. As you can see using this scale, and you have a picture here where you can get the pointed portion of this to be touching the back surface of the lens and you can take the measurement straight away to the apex of your cornea while you're visualizing from the side. And you have another simple device called the uh, panorometer. This device is basically gonna help us measure the wrap angle as you can see here. Now I have this right over here. Now you're just gonna be basically placing it on both surfaces and you can read the amount of wrap besides this from 90 to 100, it's gonna be about 10 degree wrap angle. If at all, it's gonna be positioned like that. Okay, this is one very simple and very effective scale. You have an attachment to this, which will help you also measure the pantoscopic angle by just placing it. It's pretty simple. You have this, you just have to place it over here and you can see those readings that, you, that I can, I'm showing it to you here. You just have to position it and you keep this exactly perpendicular. So you, you will be able to get the pantoscopic values as well. Now there were three that I said that we essentially require is vertex distance, pantoscopic and the wrap angle, which can be measured by your panorometer. Of course, these additional devices, which is over here, such as your pupillometer and the dye test, these somehow I feel adds a little value to the entire workup that you're doing with reference to the measurements. Now let's take an example to whatever I have just discussed. I make two identical pairs of glasses for this Mr. Hamant, he has a prescription of minus 125, minus 50 at 40 and minus 175 with minus 75, 135 axes. And it is just a simple single vision pair of glasses. He's 34 years old. And I have made two identical pair of glasses. One, which we all generally end up doing. I would say at least about 99% of us as opticians end up giving this individual a 1.5 index or a 1.6 index, finish single vision with an advanced anti-reflection coating to it. The second pair which we've made is a 1.5 index process range, 
with an advanced anti-reflection coating. Of course, this is the customized one with all the parameters of vertex distance, wrap angles, and all the works that we have provided to him. Now, what do you think would have been his response? The very word, I mean, the very first time he would have just sat in your place and compared between spectacle A and spectacle B, he would say, I, I guess they both feel the same. I'm not really sure how, how different it is, but then when it comes to the pricing, the processed ones are going to cost this individual at least a good three to three and a half times more. That's quite a, quite a huge difference between the two. But let's say you give him a call after a couple of days and say, or rather ask him, sir, do you experience any differences with regards to the, the contrast, the richness of the color? I'm sure, as I just discussed, I'm sure he is going to say, yes, I feel a lot more comfortable with the processed pair of glasses compared to the other pair of glasses that we have. This is something that is not perceived on the very first minute or first hour of wearing it. He will take a little time, but once he adapts to it, he knows the value of these changes or uh, his decision on getting a customized single vision pair of glasses. Now let's talk about customized versus to that of the personalized progressive lenses which is what we are actually uh, meant to discuss on this, on this platform here today. Now, for customized ones, the frame fit measurements that we are able to take, that is your vertex distance, the pantoscopic, the wrap angles, monocular PDs, and the fitting height, which is a standard one for your customized. There is another small thing, which is what we call as the eye rotation center. Now, these eye rotation centers are not possible by your regular or basic uh, measuring devices that we have. So you need this. Uh, it's possible, rather, it's possible only with certain devices which are meant for personalized progressive lens design processing. Now, this, I will just probably go on to it. So that's one of those equipments uh, we have over here. What I have is this particular equipment called the eye partner. And this helps us in measuring certain parameters which we require for customization and for personalization of a progressive lens. Now, as you see it here, it gives us for far vision itself, it gives us the, the, measure, the measurements of the right eye in terms of PD and the left eye, and also gives us the height, which is slightly varying. And if you look down on this, there is a slight tilt in, there is a slight tilt on this frame. So it is actually measuring very, very precisely. The eye rotation center distance is also something that is pretty important for them to manufacture or customize the design of progressives that you need. It gives us the pantoscopic angle as it's showing over two degrees over here and some of the frame measurements, which is mentioned here with a small wrap angle of four degrees. Now, when it comes to personalization, you need to probably have an idea about the reading distance at which one would work. So, sorry. The reading distance over here and actually shows to be a 40 centimeter reading distance. So this will give the idea of why you're processing the lenses as to how much or how low should your reading zone be in comparison to that of your fitting cross. The second parameter it would also pick up would be something like the dominant eye as it's showing here in my case it's the left. And the third, which is important for personalization, again, is the head eye ratio. What this means is when a person is wearing his glasses or even otherwise, is he the person who is actually just moving his eyes to visualize certain things or does he actually move much of his head? Okay, so based on those values that you would get, the, 
the laboratory would be able to design your progressive lenses. In this case, it is not only processing the, the back surface, but it also processes the front surface, keeping in mind all the other parameters, such as the reading distance. So your corridor width or a corridor height is going to be different. It's not going to be from the preset blank. It is going to be different. So it matches very precisely for your uh, distance correction and the drop in your near vision zone. So this is how your these equipments are actually very useful. There are some of the other equipments which, as I have uh, put up here, the first one is an image which you will see on the monitor of your uh, Visio office from Islaw. This is the most advanced, at least claimed to be the most advanced uh, uh, equipment that's from Zeiss called the Visio Fit. This is from the Nikon, or the two bottom ones over here are basically the portable iPad based software. It comes with a small kit, which is actually going to have this setup, which is going to be mounted onto your frame, which is pretty light. And these things that you're seeing here, the tiny bit of green shining ones, and these crosses that you're seeing on that, all these are basically sensors, which your camera and your software in the iPad is measuring through. For example, it is also measuring the pantoscopic angle, the wrap angle, and it's all sensed only these through these sensors, which is mounted on this device, which in turn is mounted on your frame absolutely straight. Okay. Uh, Polo, can you put up the second poll question, please? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, a complex prescription. Right. I'll show it a little later. A complex prescription such as this plus one with minus 225 with 120, and left eye is minus 125 with minus three at 70 axes with two different additions, right eye being two and the left eye is about one and a half. Well, would you dispense a customized progressive ad lenses for this case? or to play safe, a separate pair of distance and near spectacles. Sir, approximately 52% have answered. So I'm ending the poll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sharing the results. Wow. Customized progressive ad lenses. That's, that's pretty confident. Yes. Well, if I was you in the beginning stages, I probably would have said, with a little hesitation, I may have said separate pair of glasses. But it is wise and right thing for us to do. Am I audible? There's some different disturbance. Yeah, carry on, Ajay. Yeah, that was the prescription. Now, the first thought is that we would get is, is this person sort of a kick in the right eye? And would it be wise for us to consider giving him a customized progressive lenses. Yes, it's absolutely right for a person to think in advising this, this individual to go ahead with uh, customized progressive. First of all, please note, a person with such prescription, even let's assume he's going to be just wearing a single vision all these days and managing with his left eye for near. But assuming that this guy was just wearing a a single vision, he knows how important it is for him to wear this correction and he would not be able to manage even for a short while without his spectacles on. 
right? So when you're giving him something which is more advanced in terms of the design, you're enhancing his quality of vision, not only for distance, but also for his near vision. Because the software takes into consider something, some, a, a unique technology which is recently added up called the binocular harmonization technology, which is from Hoyer, which in different gazes, which calculates for such a prescription to sync or improve the binocularity in different gazes, be it your distance and, or be it near. So yes, it is the, the best thing to consider is to give the person a customized progressive lenses where there is a need in such cases. Now let me give another example as to how to upsell for a prescription that comes like this. There's a well-dressed gentleman wearing a silo trimless spectacles who walks into the store and he hands over a prescription which is showing a plus 75, plus 50, 180 and the difference on the left eye with a plus 50, plus 150, 180 and the addition is plus two for a 56 year old gentleman. And he's got a fairly good vision in both his eyes. Over after some bit of discussion, he finalizes or selects a new full rim titanium frame and then he requests you or the optician to help him out in selecting the lenses. Now what generally people do in most of the stores is straight away pick up a chart which is just describing or giving a pictorial information saying that the basic design such as this and a slightly advanced design, which is this, gives you a slightly wide corridor. And for a person to be functioning with their laptops, it's easier for them to use something which is not a wider corridor. And hence, I am recommending probably this B or C. They really don't go up to the fourth part, the fourth design over here. Now, this is where I have seen many people stop, probably with the fear that this is gonna be a lot more expensive. What one needs to know or also understand in these cases is to be aware of these small descriptions that are given beneath or below in the chart. What is getting better if you were to provide them a slightly advanced design from B to C or C to D? What is the advantages? This is something that many salesmen or the sales managers are not able to express or understand and have a conversation with their customers. This is where many people actually lose out on dispensing the high end progressive ad lenses. What should have actually otherwise been done is start from checking his old pair of glasses. First try to understand in this particular case what this gentleman was actually using in the past. So you have the same inscribed laser marks on the progressive glasses that he has been using. So you can actually pick up quite a bit of details with regard to the, the logo, which gives you the idea about the parameters, the index, whether it's a short corridor or a regular corridor, and also the ad power which he was using. So from this, you can have an idea of what was the kind of design that this person was using. Let's assume this person was using an advanced soft design. Keep that in mind. And then your next question goes on to talking to him about the lifestyle, his occupation, the kind of work that he does at his office. What are his hobbies? Ask him, is there something that you are missing out in these glasses and you wish you had. Quite often people would say, no, I'm fine. But then just probably give him a little bit of a clues saying that does the opposite vehicle lights actually annoy you a bit. Some people actually voice it out before even you ask, but some definitely need a little bit guidance. So quite often the most expected response that we get are opposite vehicle lights are annoying, need to switch 
the sunglasses every now and then, have to turn my head a lot, especially while I'm doing my desk work. Once you know his concern and you know if there's a possibility to improve on those factors, you need to recommend the pair of glasses or the lens design, which will address his needs, like giving him a customized progressive lenses saying that your driving comfort is definitely going to get a lot more boosted up. It reduces the glare from the oncoming traffic, which is what your concern was. And if the person was concerned about changing sunglasses to the clear lenses, probably advise him a photogrammatic option. And of course, if the person says, I find it very cumbersome when it comes to doing my desk work, then of course you will have to try and educate the person on personalizing the design of his progressive lenses. Now, this gentleman, Mr. Samson, who had come in with that particular prescription, finally ends up, let's say he, confirms the customized design. Now, what is important is upselling is always possible only when you make the person understand the technical details, which is in customer's favor. It's not something that you should probably show it is in your favor in terms of just the value, but talking to him and saying that this is how you're gonna be benefited by the technology or the present technology, what I am suggesting, the progressive lens design. Now, what is crucial here is the measurements. The overall procedure of your measurements, the way you take it, the way you jot it down, all of these, make notes of these, it's very, very important. And this definitely in a very subtle manner actually adds a lot of value to your advanced progressive lenses that you are probably this, this to give him. Now in this one, <clears throat> the last one, which is your dispensing visit, when the person comes to pick up his pair of glasses, he has to see a value for the price he is paying or paid. And that is actually the first thing that, that impresses the person is how well you have packaged the entire uh, glasses. Now, if it's coming in, in a box, you have to sit with them and unbox it, explain its content, maybe the authenticity card, if there is an insurance to the product, and you know the, uh, the coating benefits that he has, all those things. I Usually what I would do is actually explain quite a bit about the authenticity card. And then just hand over the pair of glasses to this gentleman. What you all wish to hear is, this fit is just perfect. Those are the kind of wordings that you would like to hear, or this fit is just right. Even if it is his old pair of glasses, let's say with his old frame, it is important for you to actually make sure you do the right kind of fitting. That is, the, you have to pay attention to it during your measurements. And if the nose pads are dirty, just change the nose pads. Do those small bits, and I'm sure it adds value to whatever he is paid. Now, when you hand over the glasses, the first thing these people actually do is, as soon as they put it on, they feel the comfort. And then the second thing they would do is either they pull out the mobile phones from their pockets, or they just got some reading material, which they would first start to look at. And after which, then he would move his hands a little farther away, assess the intermediate distance. It's only the last bit that they would look at is the far. And when we were talking about customization and the benefits and the works, we were trying to emphasize quite a bit for his distance vision. It doesn't matter. Just give him a little time. And I'm sure he is going to say, yes, this feels good. First thing is he is going to move his head and try to experience the wave effect when he's actually trying to do some reading tasks. Those are small things which is going to be much lesser if it's customized. It's going to be much lesser from his previously used software designs. And it is always wise at the dispensing visit telling him that, yes, we are going to call him back for a feedback. So that assures him that, yes, we are concerned about whatever we have dispensed and he will be mentally looking for a few of those things which we have assured him that he is going to gain benefit out of.
Okay. Well, that's all from me. Happy upselling to you all. And I think. Uh, Thanks, Ajay, for this uh, wonderful talk. You took us through uh, how do we go about uh, dispensing these uh, high end progressive edition lenses. And you also, your experience speaks a lot in this presentation where uh, the key uh, concept of upselling has come up. I mean, we all are aware that uh, high-end progressive lenses are available in the market, but somewhere there is some kind of fear that is there that is stopping us from uh, dispensing these high-end pals. Because uh, for me, when I started uh, practice, I also always had this fear that we, uh, in order to dispense something high-end, we required high-end gadgets or equipment to be able to, uh, you know, handle all the complex measurements that would uh, go into this. But then uh, you simplified it so well, and I'm sure all those who are starting out uh, in practice will gain immense uh, confidence in going about uh, dispensing these high-end uh, PAL designs, because what you showed us uh, seemed pretty simple. All that you need is a simple, um, you know, a ruler for measuring uh, the vertex distance or or, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 the ones to measure the dihedral or the wrap angle. Okay, okay. All, uh, can I request all to please keep your microphones on mute? Thank you. So it was very enlightening to hear from you. So before we move on to the uh, panel discussion, I would uh, I have a small announcement uh, by the uh, close to the end of this session, we would be sharing a survey link for all of you to fill in. So all those who fill in the survey link will receive uh, these uh, certificates from OCI. So kindly ensure that you fill that uh, before you leave or exit this meeting. Uh, again, please keep your microphones on mute, please. A lot of disturbances. So moving ahead. So I will uh, be taking up questions that are coming up on the Facebook Live as well as uh, the ones that are being typed out in the chat box. So before I get to hear from the audience, uh, let me throw open a question uh, for the panelists as well as the speaker. So when you're talking about uh, dispensing high-end progressive edition lenses, so uh, what are the commonest mistakes that can um, happen as a dispenser while dispensing these uh, progressive edition lenses. So Apurva, Reshma, uh, Ajay, any of you or all of you can share your experiences on that. Uh, shall I answer that? Yes, please. Yeah. So usually uh, high-end progressive lenses, uh, in that we uh, give the option of customizing as per the, P, uh, you know, uh, not just PD and height, but also vertex distance and everything. So before the measurements, when you're using any kind of a digital uh, equipment, it's always uh, important that you adjust the frame and then you take the measurement. Many a time what happens, uh, key, the measurements are taken and then the frames are adjusted. Then the, all that process which we did, uh, you know, uh, taking the measurement is all in vain because again, uh, after the adjustment, the, the things are going to be different. So first thing is that uh, uh, adjusting the frame and then taking the measurements. Apart from that, uh, customization has uh, options like wherein you can incorporate their uh, lifestyle and what kind of activities which um, you know, many times if you fail to ask, then that actual benefit to the wearer will be not, uh, it won't be suffice to him, right? So, Ajay sir could add two more points with like. Oh, yeah. Uh, very valuable points that she picked up, which I've actually not uh, mentioned. That is, adjusting the frame before taking the measurements is an extremely important point. That's right. And as, you know, even when you're trying to talk about the progressives, one should know as to what design of progressive, or at least giving a clue to the laboratory as to the design based on the lifestyle or the hobbies, which many people actually miss out, especially when it comes to the customized designs. Now, if you look at the brochures that different companies actually provide, it would give you that this design would suit that particular kind of a lifestyle person. He's not going to be, if a person's going to be sitting in front of the laptop. Today, the perception is everybody is sitting in front of the laptop. Not true, actually. 
Of course, yes, there is a small bit of time that is spent on the laptop, but the focus seems to be constantly in saying that the person is working in front of the laptop all through the day, but they don't really pay much attention to his hobbies or the outdoor activities which one actually go through in some part of his day. So those points, I think, should be picked up and the right kind of design of progressives also to be advised, which is not done. It's just going to be saying wider corridor and wider corridor. So he, the, the customer assumes that he's not going to experience any kind of waviness or distortions, which is again wrong. You are trying to oversell and not give him the kind of product that he was actually looking for. Right. So I'd like to make a point. So one thing is like keeping the expectations low. That's always better. And uh, keeping the keeping also keeping them uh, realistic as well. And the other thing is even after uh, taking the order for the best of the lenses, placing them precisely, you know. But the fitting is the most uh, important essence of uh, dispensing spectacles. So always make sure that they are fitted very well. Many a times it will happen that in high index lenses, the lenses will come quite flatter for a high end lens, progressive or a single vision. Uh, as we are speaking of PALS here, I'll sp stick to PALS. So even also in minus powers, higher the power, the lenses will come flatter. So even if you adjusted the frame initially correctly while taking the measurements, there is a high chance that while fitting the lenses in the spectacle frame, the frames will open out, they'll flatten out the cur curvature. So make sure you also instruct your technician, your fitter to readjust it properly, or you have to check it precisely for that. So make sure that the measurements are back to the same way as they were when they were uh, uh, taken during the measurements. That's one very important part, which is missed, you know, just before. Uh, so your troubleshooting part will be much lesser. Your uh, dispensing visit, your delivery visit will be much smoother. It will be just like a breeze. and. Uh, it just fits right and the perfect words will definitely come out from the patient's okay. mouth. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had that experience very recently, just a week ago. Yeah. Thanks a lot for your valuable inputs uh, on this. Uh, Ajay, I remember in your presentation, you did mention about uh, prescription lenses uh, for uh, single vision prescriptions also, right? Yeah. So, yes. um, Talking about uh, dispensing high-end files, is it a good move that you introduce people to, you know, prescription single visions initially so it, the transition becomes easier to upsell a high-end uh, progressive edition lenses because uh, people, many of them are not even aware that you do get, you know, uh, free from uh, single vision lenses also because the uh, concentration is mostly on uh, high index lenses or uh, high-end uh, coatings that are available in the market. We are veering towards uh, those uh, ideologies of, you know, dispensing for a single vision prescription. But seldom uh, do we think about customers Customizing a, a single vision prescription too. So, is it not a good idea to introduce people to you know prescription uh, single visions also uh, before we talk about uh, prescribing these high-end uh, progressive edition lenses? I mean, I would want Apurva Reshma also to give your inputs. Uh, first of all, single vision prescription customized design. It's of course going to be one of the best things to provide to the person. But since the price difference is going to be too much. Now, if you show a person two lenses in your hand and say one is going to give you a far better vision than the other, it's hard for a person to believe, right? And when the pricing is going to be so much of a difference. So one is one first barrier is the, the price factor. Now, let me share an experience that I've had. A person who had got his lung, uh, spectacles made in Germany had come to me in the recent, about a couple of months ago. And his friend came by and introduced me to him and said, hey, look, go ahead and get your pair of glasses done over here. So we got the glasses done. His prescription was not very high, something similar to the example I gave. And I got these glasses done, first of all, in one day's time, because it's a finished single vision. And he says, man, you guys are really fast. Over there, it took me a week to get these pair of glasses. Well, after I gave him his glasses, 
I had shifted him from a 1.5 index to a 1.56 index, which means I made the lenses a little bit more flatter. He used it for a day and he says, these don't feel as comfortable as my other pair of glasses. Now that's the difference. He was able to perceive one, the customized progressive or customized single vision glasses that he had made it there. And then when I provided him a different one, which is much more thinner and um, a lot more faster service at much lesser price than what he had paid. Now that's when he, he made me realize that there is going to be a difference sensed by these people when they swap from one design to the other, a customized design. So I will still say before even, okay, not saying that, you know, when you're switching from single vision and then you're looking forward when he goes over to his progressives, it's going to be a lot more easier transition in terms of pricing. Not really that way, but the benefits that I would look at that he's going to achieve by going ahead with customized progressives, I would definitely favor him to go in for that. Not looking at the price factor at this point of time. I don't know how the others perceive it, but I would still love to encourage a person to go ahead with customized single vision lenses. Thanks, Vijay. Um, Apoorva and Reshma. Yeah, uh, if the I generally go uh, based on the prescription that a patient brings in, or if I am testing. So if it uh, requires uh, prescription, definitely prescription, uh, I go for them. I convince for that. Uh, now, convincing a patient and explaining the benefits for, uh, along with the features for a prescription single vision lens will uh, definitely have its uh, benefits. And... Uh, if you're looking to transition an existing uh, single vision customer to a progressive, uh, if we come to your plain question, the basic one, uh, initially, yes, uh, the transition will be much smoother for a prescription single vision letter to go to a customized uh, uh, progressive uh, lenses in terms of pricing. But yes, as Sir rightly pointed it out, the dif design difference will definitely uh, be there. So you have to keep in mind uh, all the other factors that come along with it. Yeah, rightly said. So um, majorly, like you have to look for the prescription if it's some kind of a critical uh, patient where the cylinder is high or whether he has a major requirement. Specifically, in, in terms of uh, you know that vision with the regular lenses won't be uh, you know you know maybe for them. And secondly, in the frame, if you uh, the customer who has selected is. Uh, such that uh, you know uh, overly flat frame or the frame is oversized and so in that case uh, customized lenses of course helps in uh, you know, controlling that uh, distortion on the periphery level. So frame and prescription based on that we can yeah select them. Thanks a lot for your inputs on this. So I will be taking up a couple of questions uh, that we have received so far. So um... So there's a question now uh, from the audience uh, and they want to know, will the customer have difficulty if we choose a flat base curve instead of their regular or a deep a default base curve in high prescriptions, especially in uh, progressives? What will the customer have difficulty if he chooses a flat base curve? Well, uh, are we referring this to the customized design? If it is customized design, it is going to, you can take a, a flat base curve. That's the front curve that you're probably referring to for a higher minus, but that whatever the adverse effect, because it doesn't probably fit into your best form lens design in terms of the base curve that you're probably picking up. But when you are processing it on the hind surface or the rear surface, the software will actually minimize the distortions and still bring about as much as possible in terms of the best form designed benefits. There is no, I would say it shouldn't create any problem as long as it is digitally processed uh, lens. Okay, thanks Ajay. So we have another question. Uh, what are the points to be kept in mind when shipping?
putting a press bio from a simple ready reader to progressive lenses, both from the uh, customers and the practitioners' point of view. Is that for me? Yes, Any, okay. it's open to anyone. <laughs> okay, uh, what are the things that from ready readers to a progressive, actually, you just have to tell them that it will take a little time for the person to adapt to these progressives. Try not to highlight too much about the point saying that he would probably experience a slight blurry vision on the periphery or the lower, the, the desk kind of work. Try not to highlight anything much. Do tell him that yes, there is gonna be a little bit of a head movement, be it from uh, whatever trying, objects you're trying to focus. It could be the mobile, your a laptop or something on the desks or something across the room. But all this is gonna be demanding a little bit of a head movement. Besides that, I think you should let him free to experience it. Because I don't think there is too much of complaints like we used to have when we talk or educate the person a little too much that these are the things that you're going to experience and he's going to be looking for it and come back with as a complaint. So just give him some time and say, you will adapt to it because there are millions who have adapted to it. You're nothing special. Just go ahead and use it. I think that's a very uh, valid point. I can only think about uh, my experience when I first uh, started wearing progressives. All that I could see was distortions. I, I was so clumsy that I held on to my kid's uh, hand while I was walking with the fear that I would trip and fall. It was not even funny, the experience that I had because I was only th uh, thinking and concentrating on the periphery of the lens. I have never bothered to look through the center. So you get psyched up. It's as simple as that the minute you mention that you will experience distortions at the periphery you will end up thinking about that all the time it's like you know don't think about monkey for the next one minute i guarantee you 100 percent we will be thinking about the monkey the next one minute so it's yes. it's as simple as that so thanks for bringing that up and for the question as well so uh we Not have another if i can question. if i can answer one more point for that yes sure apurva uh, generally, people who shift from plain readers to a progressive generally have a very uh, plain or to very low prescription for distance. So it is also a very good opportunity to, to convert those patients to office lenses. So that is a very good uh, experience that I have had with majority of my patients. So a person who is having only reading and a desk job, uh, and if he doesn't want to see anything far with the glasses, if he doesn't want to drive, or if he doesn't want to do any distance activities with the glasses, uh, this is a very good time for them to convert to office lenses. And most, most of the office lenses which are available in the market from majority of the lens makers are quite good. So in that, the peripheral aberrations and distortions are quite, quite lesser. So I think they initially, if they adapt to even office lenses, then if they get the hang of it and if they feel that, no, I don't want to switch glasses, maybe two years down the line when the prescription changes, they might opt for a regular with along with the distance prescription as well. So that is another time you can upset. I agree with that point, Apoorva. Thank you. It's a fabulous approach to this. And there will be a little bit of uh, calculations required when we are suggesting the office lenses. We could also put it to use it in, in such a manner where the person can visualize his distance as good as plano correction. You're right, yes. Thanks for that. So we have another question. So apart from prescription and lifestyle, uh, do you consider frame shape and size for recommending high-end progressives? Today, I think the, uh, the shapes uh, can be managed. Like if you think about too much of a wrap, the sports design wear of frames for progressives, was a big no in the past. The aviator shapes in the past was a big no, but with the present customizations that are possible, I don't think that should probably uh, stop anyone from going ahead on a progressives for that. You can do wonders with the digital processing. I'm sure. 
So we have uh, one last question from the audience. So uh, this is from Jayendra who had a problem in dispensing single vision high cylinder in flatter base. So when I changed to a ready single vision lens, he was comfortable again. So he's just shared his experience. So what do you have to say about it? Well, it's only the best form lens design. He's gone closer to what is most appropriate for that particular curvature. In terms of finished single visions itself, probably the front curvature, which is more curved from six, probably a six base. And just to make this more cosmetically more appealing, they would have opted for a much flatter lens design, which did not work out. So it did not fall into the category of best form lens design. And when you revert back to the best form lens design, it will definitely work very well for this individual. This is what it would do. Your customization would also do in, in a completely far more different way. You can flatten the base curve, but still achieve the same effect. Thank you so much, Ajay. With this, I think uh, we have come to the end of uh, today's uh, lecture, which was on dispensing high-end progressive addition lenses. So I take this opportunity to thank um, Mr. Ajay Shinde once again for enlightening us on this very uh, important and beautiful topic of dispensing high-end progressive edition lenses. And I also, uh, and I'm also thankful to Apurva and Reshma uh, who joined the panel discussion and shared their views, thoughts, as well as experiences in uh, dispensing uh, high-end progressive edition lenses. Thanks everyone for joining us today. So before we exit, uh, another a quick um, message, please uh, do uh, fill in the survey link that has been shared on the chat box as well as uh, for the Facebook live audience. Uh, also, we will be meeting up next for the final uh, lecture of the optometry uh, series, Sri Rajni Turakya Memorial Optometry Lecture Series, which will be on troubleshooting in progressive edition lenses. So uh, if you notice that or the audience who have joined us for the previous uh, two lectures would know the flow in which uh, the lectures have been uh, taken through. We started with presbyopic correction, then we uh, were enlightened about the uh, latest in uh, progressive edition lens designs. And today's lecture was on dispensing aspect of these high-end progressive edition lenses. So this, the final lecture will um, kind of summarize the entire lecture series, which will be on troubleshooting progressive edition lens, lens, lens design dispensing. So please uh, do join us for the final lecture as well. And do not uh, forget to uh, you know, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel of uh, Optometric Council. Uh, we have all these webinars recorded uh, for your future reference. So please do visit and uh, like and comment as well. So it's thanks from me before I'm, that I'm signing off. Uh, yes, Lakshmi. Me too. Thank yeah. you. Uh, is Sneha Thank there? Thank you. Sneha, you're there? Hello. Uh, hi, Sneha. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I just thought I'd just, uh, you know, tell the audience, uh, thanks for, you know, dedicating this lecture series uh, in your dad's name. And I also wanted to hear from you on your feedback as to how do you think the entire se series is going on? Just to uh, you know, so that the audience also get your kind of opinion. Sure, sure. In fact, I have to, I have to thank uh, OCI and Hoya who have come out with this uh, proposal of, you know, in memory of uh, my dad. So thank you very much uh, once more. And I think it's coming out very well because uh, these are all very practical lectures, you know, which day to day uh, in dispensing we face. And uh, the, the way the, uh, the products are being uh, changed, uh, new new products are coming up. And many a times a lot of uh, opticians are not able to keep pace with the dispensing uh, skills, you know. So these small uh, uh, pearls uh, which... Uh, experience uh, speakers, panelists, all are sharing, uh, will go a very long way in improving their day-to-day uh, -day dispensing. I think that that is what is good for everybody because, you know, even a few dissatisfied uh, progressive customers uh, means that we are, we are uh, making them uh, scared to come back to progressives. So, you know, ideally we should be having hardly any dropouts and uh, these things will go a very long way. Uh, because just uh, sharing some of my experience, that I was shocked um, last week when we took um, uh, husband and wife some measurements for a basic progressive. 
they said we have been wearing for the last uh, six years. Nobody has taken measurements so far. They have this marking, and you know, I think they just take the prescription frame, and they were comfortable. You know, so the, uh, we are going to deliver the specs today, and we hope that you know, having dispensed properly, uh, they are happy. So this is the state of affairs. Uh, so I think these lectures are really well planned and will definitely help improve the dispensing standards. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Snehal. Apurva, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Pleasure is mine. Your time uh, and your valuable inputs as well. And thank you, uh, Reshma, for all the support we are getting from Hoya as well. Because uh, without, uh, you know, industry support, such kind of um, lectures, I don't think is really possible. So thanks to all of you. And thanks to Ajay as well for the informative lecture. Well, thank you all again. Thank you, Anita. Thanks, all. And uh, we'd all meet again on the 17th. And the speaker is going to be Dr. Vishwanath. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.